battle new like do whoa Stop my train of thought, what is this? Hello Duelist, Ross Mero here and today we are going to be opening a box of Ignition Assault. So in an attempt to make my videos a little bit better, maybe a bit faster and a bit smoother, I'm going to return, I'm going to try returning to my traditional old way of opening booster boxes where I basically don't read out the names of every single card I pull. I'm just going to focus on the foils, not even the rares this time. So we are starting off with that new uh, archetype based on Romance of the Three Kingdoms and already we are starting off with an Egg Ignister here. I mean, every, all of us have been looking forward to this booster, right? Just for this archetype alone. And here we have Water, Leviathan, Egg Ignister, just a common, okay? And there we go, we are just ending off with a rare from the Senka archetype. Yes, I believe that's what the name is in Japanese, which translates literally to war flower or flower blossoming on the battlefield. They're all based on those characters from the Chinese romance of the Three Kingdom novels. There's another one right there. And we've got the Megalith archetype here. Oh, and our next rare, we've, on our second pack, we get another Ad Ignister, this time a rare. Archichi Ad Ignister. Okay, you know what? We're gonna put the Ad, we are gonna put the Ad Ignisters down on the board. Let me get my Water Leviathan out. Okay, so we've got Archichi here on the left, representing Flame. Water Leviathan over here. Moving on to the third pack. Okay, so the first two packs, nothing too exciting just yet. So even though I'm not going to read out all the names, I will stop at some of the comments and rares that I feel like I should focus on. Like, well, the Ad Ignisters as you guys have seen here. And here we have Bururu Ad Ignister representing Windy. Nice. So we've already got Fire and Wind. And as you guys can see here, Karakuri is also getting legacy support in this set as well. Very cool to see them come back. And looks like, oh man, this is so epic. First, let's take a look at our rare, which is going to be Picari at Ignister, representing lightning. So now we have, I'm going to move Water Leviathan over here. Now we have fire, wind, and light. Now let's take a look at our very first super rare. Kujikuri Amulet, you can only activate one card with this name per turn. Send one level 9 monster from your hand or face up from your field to the graveyard. Draw two cards. Now that sounds pretty interesting. I know we have one of these for like, what was that, level... Was it level 8 monsters? Like, something about like the sword. It has, oh, I forgot, I forget the name of the card, but it has like a sword and like two cards in the artwork. I don't really play level 9 decks, so I'm not too sure what that would help with. A Megalith card, pretty cool. More new legacy support for Sky Striker, I believe. And here's Arms Call, a rare trap. From the artwork alone, I assume that's going to like help the new Structure deck R that just came out with the Gemini God Phoenix Gear Free, all those equip spell plays. And here we have Doyon at Ignister representing I himself. We've got four attributes, two left to go. Very nice. And here we have another rare. Yes, so the whole idea of why I'm not really reading out all the cards anymore is because I want to get to these booster box openings more quickly. Oh man, Hiari at Ignister. So are they all like, they're mostly common with a few rares I think. Okay, Hiari we're gonna put down over here. Yes, I wanna go through these openings faster because I know a lot of people don't have very long attention spans nowadays. So in order to make it a bit more like exciting and interesting for the people watching, here's a Karakuri Trap. And other than the at Ignisters, a very interesting card we can potentially Pull from this is going to be a card that commemorates the 10,000th card in the Yu-Gi-Oh! OCG, 10,000 Dragon. Anyway, here we have Doshin at Ignister. So with that, okay, it looks like the basic and the basic main deck at Ignisters are going to be really easy to complete. We basically have six of them here. Only Achichi and Picari were rare. The other four were all common. So let's continue on with this. A Dragon Maid card and a Senka card. Dude, seriously, we, we've we gone through so many packs and we only have a super rare so far. You know what, since I'm opening this pack, I might as well talk about the ending of Vrains as well. What did you guys actually think about the end of the Vrains series anime? Honestly, I didn't really like it that much. Another water dragon. Is that like a phantom? Whoa, wait a second. I recognize this foiling. This should be an ultimate rare. I believe so. 
Yes, I think so, but it's kind of hard to tell because the monster is not foiled at all, only his backgrounds are, but I think this should be ultimate rare, you guys can see from sort of like the silver foiling on the border, and this is for Karakuri. Karakuri Daigongen Brave. To synchro summon this monster, you'll need a tuner plus one or more non-tuner machine type monsters. If this card is successfully synchro summoned, special summon one Karakuri monster from your deck. Second effect, while this card is on the field, your defense position monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. Third effect, if a face-up Karakuri monster on your field changes its battle position, you can target one card on the opponent's field, banish that target. So honestly, I have never touched or played Karakuri, so I can't really gauge how strong that new support is, but just from the sensing and like my extremely, extremely old memories of playing against Karakuri, in the 5Ds era, I feel like it's quite strong, pretty decent support. Anyway, Bururu again. And, oh wow, Chronomaly support as well. Oh right, if I remember correctly, they're also supporting like those 3, 4, and 5, the 3 characters from uh, Zael. And here we have I Drink Bone. Sorry, I mean Idling Born, a quick play spell for Ed Ignister since it has I in its name. And our next super rare is going to be a new version of Raigeki. In Japanese, it's Lightning Storm, but I believe it will be localized as Raigeki Storm. You can only activate one card with this name per turn. If you have no face-up cards on the field, choose one of the following effects and activate them. First choice, destroy all attack position monsters on your opponent's field. Second choice, destroy all spell and trap cards on the opponent's field. So. Pretty good, a nice comeback card right there. Unfortunately, you can only activate it when you have no face down, uh, face up cards on your field. But I mean, I guess you could have some face down defense position monsters as well as back row as well. So another Doyon right here, Chronomaly, Megalith, some other cards, and Ignister Island. Now this is a card that I definitely have to give a shout out to. What an important card for this deck. I was expecting it to be like super rare, man. What's it doing as just a rare? So I guess like basically the foils for Ed, Ed, for Ed and Mister are just all of the other monsters like Light Dragon as we can see on the cover as well as Dark Knights or localized as Dark Templar. I'm honestly not sure why they had to localize that. And here we have what it seems to be a, ooh, a Psychic Link monster. Okay, we're almost at the end of our first pile. But yes, going back to the ending of Reigns, what did you guys think of it? I heard a lot of people say like it was not bad and it gave some good closure to the series, but honestly, I disagree, you know, like, even though five, uh, Arc 5's ending was so messed up, I actually think uh, Vrains did a better job, uh, I actually think Vrains did a worse job with the ending. Anyway, here we have Fire Phoenix, Ed Ignister, a link rare to add to our Ed Ignister family there. Honestly, taking out way too much space on my field right now. Okay, let's see. Our, okay, two more packs on the right stack, let's continue. And the reason why I think this is the case is because I honestly don't think the writers have thought out very well what's even supposed to happen in the end of Reigns. I mean, Playmaker is going on a journey to where? This is not like the ending of GX where Jaden can just run off and then start travelling the world and battle new like do- WHOA! Stop my train of thought! What is this? I believe this is a new- well, in English, I think you guys get these monsters as the Gizmax series, and I love them so much. I love all of their designs. So this one is Gizmax Ameno Kaku no Mikatsuchi. This card name's first, second, and third effects can only be activated once per turn. First effect, if there is a monster in an extra monster zone, you can special summon this card from the hand. Second effect, you can target one face-up monster in an extra monster zone, equip that monster to this card, and only one card can be equipped to this card by this effect. Third effect, when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can special summon one of your monsters that are equipped to this card. So, pretty interesting, like anti-extra deck, anti extra monster zone card right there. Oh, hold up, I forgot we have one last card left here, but all in all, I've really always liked the Gizmag monsters for both their designs and their effects. They are pretty cool in that sense. But yes, going back to the ending of Reigns, I really just wish it Oh, hold up! So we have a we have the other version of Doyon. Do Don Yoribo at Ignister. I am honestly not sure where to fit this guy on my field anymore. I'm gonna move the packs back a bit so I can move all the cards a little bit to uh, behind, so there's sort of like an extra space below. We'll put a uh, Don Yoribo over here and continue opening. Like, I just wish they made, they showed Yusaku returning to his normal life, because honestly, I don't really like his, I don't know, 
endless journey which doesn't really have a point if they don't explain it and it's completely left up to the viewer's speculation. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to have an open-ended ending to a story where viewers can basically wonder about what happens next, what happens to the characters after the events of the story, but I think in the case of the Vrain's ending, it was too open-ended. There is no basis to even think that I and the other uh, Ignis could even be revived and yet suddenly they show Ai opening his eyes at the end of the scene and then we don't even understand why Yusaku is going on a journey because based on our understanding of the law so far, the Ignis should all be gone so good, F gone for good. If there is any reason for them to still be alive, that is beyond the scope of what they've explained and that's why I don't really like that at all. It doesn't fit the worldview they've established and it makes the ending and the final battle between Yusaku and I less important, less climactic, less dramatic, less decisive because in the end if I is still alive, it didn't matter. Anyway, here we have Earth Golem at Ignister. <laughs> Sorry, I really went on a rant over there a bit because I really did not like that part of the ending. And here we have Catch Copy, a super rare track. You can only activate one card with this name per turn. If your opponent uses an effect to add a card to his hand other than by drawing, you can take one card from your deck, reveal it to your opponent and add it to your hand. However, during this turn, you cannot activate the effects of cards with that name. Okay, so pretty interesting, uh, just generic trap card that can be used in many decks. So let's move on to the next pack right here. With all that being said, I am really looking forward to the seventh season of Yu-Gi-Oh! Really wondering what direction they're planning to go with next for the entire card game because now they've added Link to like completely change the format and the way that Yu-Gi-Oh! is being played, right? So the, the natural thing, the natural logic to think of is that you'll probably keep Link format and then try to develop it maybe with some new mechanic. But the thing, of, I'm just not sure what mechanic they could come up with that would fit into Link and here's our secret rare and it is gonna be a secret rare version of the super rare we pulled earlier, Kujikuri Amulets. And if you guys have watched enough of my opening videos, you guys will know how much I feel about getting my secret rare as a repeat of one of my earlier foils, especially just the super rare, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. But yes, so I think, right, Konami, even though it might not be the best decision, Konami might actually maybe be thinking of doing another kind of soft reset where maybe we create a new kind of third format, moving on from like master format and link format. I really hope they don't like just completely go into speed duels and like the real card game just becomes completely speed duels. That would not be a good idea. I really would not like that a lot at all. I'd rather they just keep speed duel as a separate format and try to do something with the main format uh, with Yu-Gi-Oh 7, you know. So another idling born. But yeah, it's like I keep racking my head but I'm just not sure how they can add something else to Link. Because if they come up with another summoning method or summoning mechanic like they've always done every season until now, how will that fit into Link? Is it going to be an extension of, of Link? Or is it just going to be something that's going to be sort of like slowed down by Link like all the other summoning methods we've experienced so far? Anyway, here we have Megalith Ophiel, a new card for the new Megalith archetype, which is a pure ritual archetype. This is another really cool one that I think you guys should really keep an eye on. This card is summoned by the effects of Megalith cards, and this card name's second effect can only be activated once per turn. First effect, if this card is successfully ritual summoned, you can add one Megalith monster other than Megalith Ophiel from your deck to your hand. Second effect, you can tribute monsters from your hand or field, including this face-up card on the field, such that their combined levels are equal to or greater than the level of a ritual monster in your hand. Special summon that ritual monster, so very cool. I really like the whole concept of this archetype, right? Like sort of like breaking the old limitation of ritual by creating a deck full of ritual monsters where both where the ritual monsters can basically be used as like the trigger for the ritual summon or a substitute for the ritual spell. So that is really nice and interesting, I feel. Here we've got another copy, Gravity Controller, of that Psychic Link we saw earlier. But yeah, so that was just some random thoughts on Yu-Gi-Oh! 7. It's supposed to start next year, so I'm really looking forward to receiving more news about it and the new protagonist. But going back to Vrains, honestly, in the end, 
I think my favorite battle and characters of all time was really that like Soul Burner versus Revolver duel at the end. That was just so epic and another copy of Fire Phoenix. I just loved how that final battle really settled like the character development for both characters and it was so intense, man. I liked it so much better than honestly the final battle between uh, uh, Yusaku and I. I mean, it was pretty intense but uh, I don't know, man. Like. I just didn't really appreciate it, like, I just feel like there have been so many issues with the Brains anime, I've heard that it's potentially caused of like due to like budget issues and then like some issues with like the manpower and like the members of the animation team as well, but I just feel like they just didn't have the resources to put in their full effort into making a good animation, so sometimes like the music choices were off the direction of the scenes, and okay, an ultra rare for Megalith, that is pretty cool, so I think that's like... Most of my foils so far, they're completely all over the place, like they're mostly generic but most, I think the, the most of the foils I've been getting so far have been from Megalith and by most I mean literally only two. So this is Megalith Alatron. This card is summoned by Megalith card effects and this card name's first and second effects can only be activated once per turn. First effect, during either your or your opponent's turn, you can discard this card from your hand to perform a ritual summon of a Megalith monster from your hand. So very nice, so this is acting as a substitute for the ritual spell and also allowing you to use it on your opponent's turn as well, pretty sick. Second effect, when your opponent activates an effect that targets cards on your field, you can return one ritual monster from your grave to the bottom of your deck to negate that activation and destroy that card. So pretty sick, nice defensive play over there. I have honestly no idea where I'm gonna fit this guy. Let's try shifting everyone just a little bit to the left. So. We can just barely make him out at the bottom right over here and let's carry on. I am pretty shook now just realizing that I actually have not pulled any Ed Ignister foils at all. Very unfortunate, I was hoping to at least get like a Dark Templar or Dark Knight. We still have some chances to go with a couple of boosters left on the last speak of the Ignister and there we go and our rare is Megalith Betsol as well, the last uh, ritual level 8 for the deck. And here we have Wind Pegasus at Ignister, a super rare synchro wind attribute. To synchro summon this monster, you'll need a tuner plus one or more non-tuner monsters. This card name's first and second effects can only be activated once per turn. First effect, during your main phase, you can destroy spell and traps on your opponent's field up to the number of Ed Ignister monsters on your field. Second effect, while this card is on the field or in the graveyard, if another one of your cards is destroyed by battle or your opponent's effect, you can banish this card and target one card on your opponent's field. Return that card to its owner's deck. So all in all, honestly, as a level 7, I think I would actually just put Wind Pegasus at Agnister as sort of like as a toolbox monster just for like that utility in other level 7 synchro decks as well but I mean even considering the fact that if you're not playing at Agnister maybe you only have one at Ad Agnister on your field with Wind Pegasus in a non at Agnister deck that still allows you to destroy one of your opponent's spells and traps every turn it's alive and then that basically that banish from the grave after it's destroyed in order to return one of your opponent's cards to his deck as well is also pretty powerful, man. So that sounds really useful overall, but his stats, 2.3k attack and 1.5k defense, I mean, not too fantastic, but I mean, if he had better stats, that would be way too OP considering that effect already. And Witchcraft Jenny, that will be a new legacy support for Witchcraft as well. Generally, quite a, generally there is there's quite a... Ah! Interesting variety of legacy support in this booster, I feel. Man, our playmat is literally just full of cards right now. And I've completely lost track of what other rarities we're missing. So this is Arc Jet a Light Crafter. And the reason why I'm shouting this out is because he's a new support card for the deck. The Dyson Sphere deck used by V or 5 in the Zale anime. Very cool. Did we get one for like Gimmick Puppet? I don't think we've got the gimmick puppet one yet, but I know we've got the chronomaly one, like, again, because it's just a common. Let's keep going, more Megalith cards. Oh, that is... This is Fortron, the Heraldry Beast, and yes, our next Ultra Rare is going to be one for Senka, and it's going to be the representative of the character known as Liu Pei from Romance of the Three Kingdoms, but his Japanese name is Ryugen. 
This card name's second and third effects can only be activated once per turn. First effect, while there are other Senka monsters on your field, your opponent cannot target this card for battle. Second effect, if your opponent has more monsters than you, you can send one card from your hand or field to the graveyard. Special summon one Senka monster from your deck other than this card. And this is pretty solid because there are some higher level Senka uh, main deck monsters with pretty good stats. Third effect, when an attack is declared for a battle involving another one of your Senka monsters, you can draw one card. So very, very sick effect right there. Just allowing you to basically get that extra draw every turn as long as you have at least this guy and another Senka monster on your field. And that'll make your opponent quite wary of wanting to attack your Senka monsters. Like, they might just end their turn if they have no other means of removal. That is pretty sick. Okay. And whoa, wait, isn't this uh, Osa, the Earth Charmer Aloft? And yes, this is one of those new Link versions of all of the Elemental Charmers. I don't think I pulled any of the other ones so far. So my first one, wait, did I pull the Fire one? Actually, I don't think so. So this Earth one would actually be my first Link Charmer. To Link summon this monster, you'll need two Earth Attribute monsters. This card is always treated as a familiar possessed card, and this card name's first and second effects can only be activated once per turn. You can target one Earth Attribute monster in your opponent's graveyard, special summon that monster to your side of the field such that this monster points to it. If this Link Summon card is destroyed by battle or your opponent's card effect, add one Earth Attribute monster with 1,500 defense or less from your deck to your hand. So, I believe that is for searching out the like familiar possessed version or like basically just the main deck version of this card. I don't think you guys can even see it anymore. Let me just shift my ignition assault box a bit back and we are now down to the final pack. I have not been keeping track of my foil posts at all throughout this entire opening so who knows maybe we still have one final chance to pull that epic 10,000 dragon or maybe just a Dark Templar and Ignister, that would be very nice as well. But let's get right into this. Don Yoribo at Ignister, a new Ghost Trick Legacy support, Ghost Trick Fairy, Close Sheep, Risagum, Risagum XC. So this is a new uh, support for Chaos XCs. I believe I saw it on the OCG Twitter. And will we get anything? No. No, and the final card that we are pulling in this Ignition Assault Booster Box opening is a Senka Monster. So that'll be all for this Ignition Assault Booster Box opening. If you enjoyed this video, do give it a like. Let me know what you guys think about these new cards in the comment section down below. And don't forget to subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! OCG Booster Box and Product openings on the day of release. Our next release is another one you don't want to miss, Duelist Pack Legend Duelist 6 on November 9th, which will feature some epic cool new support for every single Yu-Gi-Oh! past protagonist from Yugi, Jaden, Yusei, Yuma, and Yuya as well. But I don't think Yusaku will actually be getting any, but in any case, that will be really awesome. I have already posted some of the artwork from the pack on my channel's discussion tab, so do check it out if you guys haven't. And with that, hope to see you guys in the next Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Shh.